Welcome to Understanding Conscious Cryptids with me, Kat Hansen. I am bringing you this show in an attempt to educate you about the forgotten creatures and beings that exist alongside of us on this amazing planet that we call home. Many of these hidden beings are elusive and highly intelligent. Our ancient ancestors of North and South America knew of and understood these beings quite well. I have designed this show as a sister program to our Understanding Sasquatch series. Many people are coming into contact with these elusive creatures and they do not have any knowledge or understanding of what it is they are seeing and interacting with. Seeing and interacting this with. oftentimes leaves these individuals fearful and confused. Seeing and interacting it's my intention to shed some light and share knowledge through this series. Seeing and interacting I'm going to help alleviate that fear and confusion. It is time for the light to shine through the darkness. If you are interested in sharing your encounter, contact me directly at cathanson at yahoo.com. And I hope you enjoy the show. Hi everyone, it's me, Cat. I got some questions sent to me, and so I'm going to address them in this lesson. This lesson's going to be about the Anunnaki, and it's also going to be about the jinn. Now, I know most people have heard in one way or another about the Anunnaki, but I'm not so sure about the jinn. Okay, I want to talk first about the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki were beings that were sent on a quest to find um, gold to help heal their planet's um, atmosphere. And they supposedly came to Earth and made a prototype of human beings about 450,000 years ago. Now, the person who sent the questions to me had a couple of them, and the first one that he wanted to talk about was um, the Human Genome Project, you know, that came up with the Sasquatch beings, where we all came, says that we all came from the same Eve, and that she apparently had multiple mates. Um, the question that was sent to me was, do you think the li this lines up with the Sumerian accounts of the Anunnaki creating mankind as their slave race to be miners of the gold they desperately needed to repair Nibiru? Well, this is my answer to that. I have some issues with the Anunnaki supposedly being the ones who made humanity. If you go back through the other religions of humanity, it says we were created by gods, okay, multiple or one, take it as you will. My answer to this is I have always believed the ancient accounts. So now do I believe what the Anunnaki are saying? Um, excuse me. Do I believe what the Sumerians were saying? And my answer th to that has to be in their eyes they were believing what they were told. And they chose to believe that these beings were gods. Well, in many cultures, we have demons, you know, and they are very well known as tricksters. So I've always just taken it as a grain of salt with whatever the and people have to say about the Anunnaki, because I personally do not believe that they came down here and genetically ma manipulated human beings into existence. I just don't. I don't um, have an answer to this one way or the other because as an archaeologist I have never found definitive proof for either way. So I cannot say a definite yes for this. Okay, my other answer to this series of questions is um, the second question that he had 
is has mankind become obsessed with reaching outer space in response to an inner reaching out for the hand of God you know that comes from genetic memory okay and I am just to the point with all of this that um, my own personal feelings on this is that we are being manipulated many ways around by beings if you want to call them that uh, we know as demons fallen angels lower minions whatever you want to call them and I think that they've been doing this for a long time because they can they've stuck their fingers in the pie and claimed that they made humanity and I think that they did this in a way so that they could kind of blackball God they didn't want us believing in him because if we do then it takes away from their ability to overtake the earth and its species that are on it now I like I said I have some issues with this theory and in asking me this question I am sorry but I'm just gonna say what I feel and I truly feel that this planet is one of many that was designed by Heavenly Father and if you do any research into what I'm talking about there is not just the Heavenly Father that we all think of you know in Christianity because there are many Heavenly Fathers and to me this leads me to believe that there was a race of engineering beings that were supreme beings that are supreme beings you know they can build planets galaxies you know whole solar systems so to me that means that they are a superior supreme being with the knowledge to do these things they are an engineer of some type and that does line up with the religious teachings that I have looked into and studied because according to one of the most ancient orders that I've looked and studied there were Heavenly Father has 12 brothers and sisters and that pretty much fits in with some of the other older religions and it talks about how he designed this system many times over and that's what the Bible states you know it says in the beginning well it actually says with what was left in the beginning they remade so I think our answer is all right there it does not talk about the Anunnaki specifically but it does say is that there are types of beings that are engineers but do I believe that they engineered humanity no I do not I believe that one creator heavenly father did that so that's going to be my answer on that and then his second question was um well i guess it's actually a third now that i'm really thinking about it he wants to know as um do i know of any cases where the establishment has undermined coerced or covered up yeah i do I have knowledge of that firsthand and that has always been one of my major complaints and I have spoken on this subject many times in telling people that the reason that I left the New World Foundation was just for this purpose was because they were covering up um, finds that my team and I were digging down in Guatemala and Central and South America you know went to Peru and um, they were covering them up because we did find quite a number of uh, artifacts that were basically giant form and we also found many that had dinosaur uh, type statuettes in them and carvings and it's hard for me to sit back on my heels and let someone 
take that information, that valuable information that uh, we had dug up, you know, worked so hard. I mean, seriously, digging in the jungles, people, is not easy. You know, it's just not. It's hot. It's really bad. You could get uh, all sorts of infections down there, you know, and die. So it's very time-consuming, very harrowing work. And to have the directors turn around and ship objects that we had found to the Smithsonian and to have them never returned and have it turn into the great abyss, I found out early on that I was really getting discouraged and really banging my head against that wall. Because as I've said many times, I went down there looking specifically for an answer as to where my own people came from. So I'm digging this up. I'm finding remains. I'm finding things that match what I've been told my entire life only to have them cataloged and shipped back and shipped out so that they were completely gone and have never been returned. So yeah, there's a big cover up. And I think that it's in our own governments. And notice I said governments as in plural, um, best interest to keep everything about our ancient past hidden. Not exactly sure why, haven't figured that one out yet, but when I do, I will let you all know. <laughs> okay, now my second topic on this subject is going to be uh, about the gin. And I have um, a friend who asked me to speak on this subject because he had really didn't have all the answers that he needed. Now, these guys are really interesting if you ever study about them, okay? It uh, says that Heavenly Father created the angels and the jinn and then man. Okay, now it's really interesting in that the jinn actually have a very similar telling to the angelic ones where Heavenly Father asked them if they could bow down and serve humans and they said no. They could not. Um, the One of the angels had done that too. You know, there were some, well, I should say more than one. You know, um, the fallen angels, the 200 fallen angels that went with Azazel, they told him as well, Azazel's big problem was bowing down and dealing with the humans. So was Lucifer's. They did not want to deal with humanity. They didn't think that humanity, it was fair that humanity had been given um, precedence over them you know they felt that they had been here longer and were in existence and operated in their own communities you see where I'm going with this they were all separate unto themselves and now they're being asked to subjugate themselves to humans well neither party angel or jinn appreciated that so they refused and Heavenly Father did what he did as punishment. He sent them to opposite realms so that they could not um, interact with us on a hostile basis. Okay, these were the, the jinn and the fallen. So they've both been locked away into different dimensions. And the only ones who supposedly stayed among humans were the angelic ones, the ones who were not fallen, who did not do evil things. So these jinn, it's, they are the second order of beings that were created. And they are basically um, made out of angel fire, if that's what you want to call it. We know it as plasma, okay? 
These are plasma-based beings that do have the ability to shapeshift. And usually what ends up happening is that they come to see children who are very easily manipulated um, at an early age. So they're coming to see them appearing as puppets, as dogs, you know, imaginary animals, if you want to call them that. Um, anything in the guise of helpful, understanding, um, friendly beings, you know, they appear to children. And as children, it's easier for a child to accept this magical being that they are seeing and interacting with more so than than adults so the child grows up with this entity being its friend you know always there in the background giving advice giving information to the point where it gets out of hand as the child grows older because the child's growing older and they have no need for this imaginary friend so what happens is that they come under the guise again showing themselves as um, pets or if they appear in the teenage years you know incubi and succubi they appear as these beautiful men or women you know and they want to protect and, and guard and guide guide being the opposite word here they want to guide these people these young teenagers into the, an area that they want them in they want them to understand about demonology they want to understand about ritual um, anything bad they can you know really get a hold on that's what they'll do so it's kind of hard when I get someone telling me but I've had this person thing gin whatever with me since I was a kid and I'm like yeah they claimed you early on and I'm not saying that in a demonic way and to scare people I'm just letting you know that they do have the capability to do this and they come and they go throughout your lifetime you know it's kind of like they leave for a while and then they come back and check in and, and see what path you're along and if you're not along the right path that they want you to be on, they're going to intervene and do some lessons, you know, like scaring you. Um, just crazy stuff that they can get their hooks into a human, okay? Now, there have been cases where um, Jin have actually married in their way. Um, human beings and that's because they actually do feel love you know these guys do have emotions you know they have anger fear love hate they have the whole set just like we do and they're able on some level to bond with these humans and become one with them that it's gotten out of hand I've noticed more and more um, people are coming to me and telling me these things, you know, and they're asking me, well, how do I get rid of them? Well, I'm not going to say it on air because this is something that I feel is very powerful and I don't like just throwing powerful things out into the world because, um, bad things happen you know and I really do not like it when people take what I've told them and misuse it or misinterpret it you know because it was in written form I prefer to speak with the person who's having the problems with this being and then that way we can go forward from there because I need to identify exactly what's going on you know whether they've decided the jinn is in love with them which they can either say they are or they can lie about being in love with you when they're not or you know are they doing this strictly strictly for manipulative purposes 
And if that's the case, then we need to work on something else, detachment, you know, of getting rid of the jinn away from you. Because, you know, like I said, they can manifest in many ways, and they also can give information in many ways. So that way it's, it's a control issue. It always has been, and it always will be with them. Um, about 98% of all jinn can't stand human beings. They really can't, you know. And there are some that, even though they don't like human beings, they are trying to get back on the good side of Heavenly Father so that they will be forgiven and be allowed back into his domain. So it's kind of hard to judge what we're dealing with here when they are jinn. You know, these guys are really good at what they do. As I said, they are a trickster. So um, their number one guys, as I said, coming to children is in animal form, you know, imaginary playmates, animals, etc. Um, and people ask me all the time, well, how do you know when you're dealing with one of those? I tell them, you know, if you wake up at night and you really feel like there's something in the room with you, uh, look around. These guys always appear darker than dark. They're just an inky, bottomless black. And they usually have the famous red glowing eyes or they have the blue glowing eyes. And these guys like to come and appear um, with hats on, you know, too. They look, the strangest thing, they look like they're wearing top hats or a big derby type of hat. Um, and you get a very malevolent feel from them. They love to watch you in the dark. That is one of their favorite things to do. You know, and I think they do it to keep humans off balance. So if you're scared, you're not going to really notice too much about them. You know, but whereas they're watching you and they're feeding off of your energy and what you're afraid of. So it needs to be said that people need to be aware of these things and what's going on. Because I've told many people many times that no matter what I tell you in these lessons, the number one thing you have to remember is that you were given dominion over everything on this earth. And that's a powerful gift, you know. You're being handed the keys to the city and told, here, have free reign because I trust you to make the right decisions. And that's what happens. We need to be able to make those right decisions. And these guys kind of block that out. So if you think you're having a problem with the gin, um, send me a message and we will talk because there are certain steps that are quite terrifying that you have to follow to get yourself rid of these guys. And there, I hope I've answered the questions because those have been weighing on my mind lately and I really wanted to get those out. And thank everybody for being so patient with me on this one. Um, I'm getting ready to go ahead and tape another one. So get ready for another lesson. But this one right now, like I said, is about the Anunnaki and the Jinn. So this is specifically for some people who had some questions for me. And if you need to, you know how to contact me. You can email me anytime at cathanson at yahoo.com. Okay, and I will get back to you because I really need to question people personally what they are dealing with this type of entity. In the meantime, I will say thank you guys for listening and I appreciate your help. Um, please click like or subscribe. Um, let me know what you think of the show. And if you have questions, keep sending them to me. I will answer them as best as I can, as fast as I can. And that will do it for me. Have a great week. Bye.